Good evening and welcome to this first video bulletin of the counting of the Victorian state election 2014. And everyone is expecting it to be a tight contest. There were two opinion polls published today, the Fairfax Ipsos poll in The Age and the News poll in The Australian. And both polls indicate Labor will win if there's a uniform swing to it with a two-party preferred vote of 52% to 48%. But the experts are warning the election could be much closer than that, and there's a number of reasons for that. The first is both polls indicate a swing back towards the coalition in the last week of the campaign. And if that momentum continued from the time that the polls were actually taken through to polling day today, then that suggests the outcome will be closer. The second point to be made here is the methodology used. Both the polls are based on two-party preferred and that means allocating preferences. Now, depending on the methodology uh, used, then the result could be quite different, and in this case, probably closer. And the third point to make is both polls are predicting a Labor victory if there's a uniform swing across the state. But of course, there is never a uniform swing in an election. It will be decided in individual seats. And the man looking at those individual seats, deciding where the election will be won, is Tim Colbatch. The last one was decided on the Frankston railway line and I think this one will probably be decided the same way. Last time the Liberals won those four seats along the line, Bentley, Morty Alec, Caron and Frankston. Uh, if, if Labor can take those, or even two or three of those seats off them this time, it'll probably form government. But that's not the only area. There's going to be other important areas in the regional cities of Ballarat, Bendigo and Geelong, particularly Ballarat where the Liberals have poured tons of money and promises into that town to try and win two Labor seats. Um, there are important battles in the outer suburbs of Cranbourn, Monbulk, uh, Eltham, Yanyin and uh, Macedon, which are all Labor seats um, that the Liberals are hoping to take off them at this time and so a couple of which have become notionally Liberal because of the redistribution. And then there's the battle in the inner suburbs between Labor and the Greens, which has got an interesting extension this time because we've got the seats of Albert Park, which has always been Labor, uh, but now it's becoming increasingly rich. It's one of the richest areas of Australia, let alone Victoria. And uh, the um, Liberals now, under, after the redistribution, are within less than 1% of taking the seat on 2010 voting. That's an interesting one, and so is its neighbour Paran, which the Liberals did win last time. That covers Turak and South Yarra, pretty posh areas, but also fairly Labor-leaning areas in Paran and Windsor, which are sort of particularly home of the gay community and uh, very inner suburban trendy, the sort of places that don't normally vote Liberal. So that's an interesting one, and what complicates that one is the Greens are also run hard in Paran, hoping to take a seat off the Liberals. So wide canvas, but the Frankston line I think is probably the crucial one. Well, that's where the election will be decided, but what's going to decide the election? What's in voters' minds as they place the vote in the ballot box? Well, state political editor Josh Gordon has covered the campaign from day one. Unemployment, of course, is at the highest level since 2001 in Victoria, so this is a, a big issue, particularly in key battlegrounds around Geelong and elsewhere. Um, I think the other big factor, which has received a lot of attention, is the federal government, in particular Tony Abbott. I've been talking to various people today and the sense is that Tony Abbott is just toxic in Victoria and he's not the entire explanation for where the, you know, the problems that the Nat Fine government's experienced, but he's at least some of the explanation. I think people are angry at the budget, they're angry about, you know, there's a perception that he hasn't been truthful with voters, and I think this has actually affected the Liberal brand in Victoria, so. Well, the opinion polls are one indicator of the outcome of the election, but so too is the mood of politicians. And the age has reporters uh, deployed around the state with different candidates, including with the two. This is where I always find myself on uh, polling day, so it was a very easy choice to be back here at Albany Rise Primary. We started the day with Daniel Andrews voting at Albany Rise Primary School in his uh, seat of Mulgrave. Uh, he turned up about 11 o'clock. There was quite a bit of a queue, probably a 10 minute wait for the uh, Premier in waiting, I guess. Uh, he was very relaxed, as usual. He didn't want to say much to the, to the waiting press and said he took nothing for granted. That thing began the day in a town he lived in for years when he was a uh, country vet. 
Portland, about as far from Melbourne as you can go if you're heading west. He did tell me that if he is returned in his seat, which is almost certain, whatever happens to his government, he will remain in Parliament for the full four-year term. I love representing great uh, the South West Coast region and I look forward to representing it if the voters in this region re-elect me. I look forward to re representing it uh, for the next four years. Of course, this election is essentially a contest between the Coalition and Labor about who will form government. But there's another contest underway in inner city Melbourne. In four electorates, the contest is between Labor and the Greens. And the Greens are hoping for the first time they can get a member up in the lower house of the Victorian Parliament. Uh, we're seeing the Greens candidate Ellen Sandell's face on billboards all around Melbourne. Uh, they cost a lot of money. We're also seeing plenty of volunteers in green shirts, lots of uh, Greens advertising, lots of uh, Greens electoral bunting everywhere at every polling booth. So clearly they're putting a lot of resources into this seat because they think they can win their first ever lower house seat. And with that, they might even get the balance of power. If the election goes down to the wire, as is predicted, uh, and there's only a couple of seats in it, maybe even one seat in it, a hung parliament potentially, it could be the Greens that have the balance of power, and that gives them uh, a lot more say in how policy is delivered over the next four years. That's all for now. We'll be back with another video bulletin when we've got some useful numbers coming in.